when practicing, especially when practicing improvising as opposed to just focusing on something more technical, it's really easy to get carried away and just kind of noodle around and play stuff that you already know how to do. Um, everybody does it, everybody deals with it. So I wanna talk a little bit about just a way that I like to practice to help me um, avoid that trap. And even though, you know, maybe what I just played, you might be hearing that and going, wow, I wish I could play that well, blah, blah, blah. But just understand that wherever you are, wherever I am at your stage of development, there will always be people who are playing stuff you wished you could play or how do they play that? And they'll always be your own stuff, which you'll be, for the most part, uh, tired of. You know, it takes a long time to get somewhere and get something into your playing. And then it's, it seems like it's only a, it, there for a little while and then you're very quickly feeling frustrated with your playing again. Let's take a really simple four bar progression, classic jazz progression here. Two, five, one, and then five of two, meaning two, five, one, and then like six, some people call it six dominant. So in the key of C, that would be D minor seven, G seven, C major seven, A seven, and flat 13 or whatever. Basically the G seven and the A seven both have alterations, okay? And in this, and actually uh, I'm speaking tenor key, so that would be a two concert C minor, F7, B flat major 7 to G7. But anyway, I'll stick with tenor key. What I, what I like to do is pick one point, okay? Again, you've heard me say this before, limitations are kind of a gateway to, to creativity. I mean, one of the things that happens when you impose some sort of restriction on yourself, some limitation, it promotes the creative side of your brain to try to uh, fight against that limitation, okay? So, and also helps you fight the overwhelm of, God, well, there's so many things to play, and what should I play? So I'm gonna demonstrate um, how over this four bars, I wanna, I wanna focus my intention. Did I say intention? Intention? Atten actually, both. My attention and my intention on the, the G7 chord for me. And I'm gonna, what I like to do sometimes is pick a sound. So maybe I'd pick the altered scale. Maybe I'd pick something more of a, a bluesy in nature. Maybe I'd pick uh, something more kind of um, uh, one particular triad, like an E-flat triad against the a G triad. I, I'd pick something, okay, some set of things. For this example, I'm going to use, I'm going to go up to the minor third and use a minor pentatonic. It's a great little trick. It'll give you every alteration in the chord, okay? So if you have a G7 altered chord, all you need to remember, instead of some fancy scale or whatever, the easiest scale to remember for that is go up a half step and play a melodic minor scale. So for G, that would mean play A flat, A flat melodic minor, starting on its seventh, which would be G natural. So when you start A flat melodic minor on its on G natural, you get the G altered scale. <laughs> For this lesson, I'm going to be dealing with the pentatonic. So all you need to do from any dominant seventh chord, just go up a minor third, so in this case B flat, and play that minor pentatonic, right? That inherently gives you, in relation to the dominant chord, it gives you the sharp nine, the flat five, the flat 13, the flat seven, and the flat nine. It gives you all five of the alter alterations. It's really easy. I wanna loop four bars, and instead of playing a whole four bar progression, what, what you're gonna hear me do is, I'm gonna to try to offload some of the challenge to my muscles, free up some RAM, if you will. Uh, the more, and, and I'm gonna get into this in a second, why repetition is important. The more RAM you can free up in your brain so that you're not thinking, so much thinking every measure, but you're thinking in spurts, it allows you to pr introduce uh, new material into your existing vocabulary, basically. So you're always gonna have stuff you already know, places your fingers like to go, um, you know, just stuff that you're used to. The key is to slowly introduce new ingredients, okay? It's kind of like there's this cake that I bake every Thanksgiving and it requires a really special kind of fancy blender. And at the very end of making the cake, it, the only way it comes out right is if you mix in the dry parts and the wet parts. It's like a pumpkin pie thing, pumpkin cake. If you just throw in all the wet ingredients and all the dry ingredients, it just turns into a mess if you do it one at a time. You have to do a little bit of one, a little bit of the other. Same thing with like building your vocabulary as an improviser. You gotta mix in the new stuff carefully. So. What I'm gonna do here, I keep saying that, but I'm actually gonna do it, is focus my attention on the G. So the other three measures, I'm gonna play. It's not that I'm not gonna play anything. It's just that I'm not really gonna concern myself with them. So 
Um, I'm really just aiming for this G7. I'm going to focus on the pentatonic, this potent, this pentatonic scale. So now I've limited like my focus to a particular measure, to a particular place, and to a particular sound. What that frees me to do is be creative rhythmically with it, or uh, melodically, or whatever. So let's see how it goes. Okay. Remember, the rest part is equally important. That's kind of a weak part. Nice half step um, resolution, but a very patternistic sounding thing. Again, very on the nose, right? That wasn't really just the pentatonic sound. Now I'm gonna get a little more robotic with it. Sometimes I might just, if I play something I like, I'll keep practicing it. Watch. Meaning I don't have to necessarily wait for that measure to come back around for me to engage with that idea. Thinking, that's kind of interesting sound there. You hear how much that note wants to uh, wants to resolve, right? That flat nine wants to resolve to the, the A flat to the G. Now what I like to do is switch over to more of a metronomic thing. I'll put on the metronome. And I'm just going to work out some ideas now that I've focused all that attention, right? I'm going to just work out some new ideas now that I've discovered the sound, discovered how I'm not really doing anything w fantastic with it. So now I'm going to loop those four measures and just by myself and with the metronome is two and four. One, two, one, two, three. Again, looking for the half step resolutions. That was another one. Uh, okay, there what I was doing was trying to take one little motive that I liked and say, okay, can I can I take that same motif and motive, motive, whatever, and just adopt it or adapt it. Why can't I talk today? Adapt it to the new chord. So Exact, something like that. But now, uh, just some exercises that work with that pentatonic scale, knowing that they're going to fit over G7. So what I'm doing here is, lot, again, the repetition that I was talking about, I got to get this stuff into my muscles. So it's going to come from a lot of repetition of very single and short ideas. just trying to get my fingers and my mind familiar with whatever the sound is. In this case, it's this pentatonic. Throughout the range of my horn by playing lots of little short ideas and repeating them a lot until I, I feel some sort of, like, like I can stop thinking about them and my 
physicality will just take over for me. That's what I'm looking for. Then I'll move on. So once I've done that a bunch, now I have a, a bunch of new ideas and I can stick with the metronome or I can go back to using a play along, but let's say I'm just using the metronome. Now I'm gonna be a little more aggressive with how I play over that measure. My idea is not to make it seem all scary. I'm just playing, what I'm doing now is I'm playing at my ability level where I've gone in sequence from what I am capable of to what I'm not really capable of to breaking that down into something I could focus on, work on, improve pretty quickly, uh, you know, just to give myself some grounding in it and then take it back into the trying to be creative and improvise. And again, what I'm doing here, it's the other three measures I'm allowing muscle memory to sort of lead the dance. And then that one measure, I'm really focusing my mental attention on it. And what can I do with that? And this way, you do this with anything. Um, you could do the same thing with any one of those four measures or, or, you know, get more complex with the patterns. But at a very basic root level, this technique really helps integrate new vocabulary into what you already are able to play. Um, and it's just a, it's a more elegant sort of synthesis and you're also again you're practicing you're, you're balancing the technical aspects with the creative and improvisational aspects um, so it's I don't know it's a really helpful technique to me I hope it's helpful for you let me know and I'll uh, see you in the next one